Go meet the people who are as passionate about these problems as you are. Go meet them. The world is yours for the taking. This is what I've realized over the past year and a half to two years. I thought this stuff is was so complicated, stuff that you know maybe we couldn't figure out. And that's just not true. What's going on everyone? My name is Kyle Gillis and today I'm talking about why engineering students make the best entrepreneurs. It's time for some confessions. Now I know I've been MIA for the last two years on this platform, but what I'm talking about today is going to be about what I've lived through the past year and a half to two years and a lot about where this channel is going. So just to kick it off, I'm gonna go over a short list of things here that I've been up to the past year now. My senior year at West Virginia University, I co-founded a company with one of my best friends in school. And several months later, we pivoted the company from an education company to an enterprise software company. Big pivot, I know, but we'll talk more about that later. We got non-dilutive funding, we've raised private capital, we've built product, we've gotten into some of the biggest incubators in the country and interviewed for some of the biggest ones in the world. And best of all, we've deeply learned about an industry and we are working hard to help solve their problems. And that probably means more than anything, to be honest. For this video, I primarily want to drive home two main points, but they're extremely important. If you understand these or even just hear these, it will help you get started in the right direction. The first point is that if you're a student or professor, there's a crazy amount of resources and infrastructure being built out to help people like yourself start a small business or a company. So I'm gonna list off three small examples here. And these are ones that we use to help our company get started with funding. Um, and that's student competitions. This can be local ones at your university or in your, co or, or in your community, um, or even nationally. So what does that mean? That means you would apply for a national competition. And then if you get in, then, then you can go there and potentially win money, or at least get feedback on your startup and, and where you're headed. The second one is grant funding for federal programs. I'm gonna talk about this more in later videos, but the idea is you can apply to get grant funding to help propel your startup. Um, and that has funded a lot of our startup in the early days. And the final one here is early contracts from federal groups focusing on startups. So there are large organizations like the Air Force, like the Army, who want to work with small businesses and startups. And if you position yourself correctly or start building a product in a particular direction, then you can actually sell to these organizations and get very large contracts or what feels like very large early on in your company history. And as a caveat here, I don't think we ever won any of these big grand prize grand prizes that's giving you $100,000 $200,000 to kick your company off. I don't think we won any of them, but it just gave us a lot of good feedback. And I would say with, without this part of it, we never would have actually got our company off the ground to be able to graduate and, and run it full time. And the second point that I wanna drive home today is, is that if you're an engineer, you're more likely to have a technical skill set that can help you build a product. So when building a company or a startup that's going to be effective, you have to have someone on the team who can actually build the product. So if you're doing a software company, one of the founders or early people on need to be a software developer, someone who can create the MVP, someone who can build it out, listen to customers, help you build the product. If you're building a manufacturing company of some sort, maybe you're 3D printing early on, you need someone who can, who can be good in AutoCAD and who can actually design these things or whatever software and design these things and, and make the prints. Um, or, or whatever, you know, same comparison for any company. But the idea is that you need someone who's technical and engineers are more likely to have that technical skill set. So as a quick example, we have two founders in our company. I'm the non-technical founder. I graduated industrial engineering. I don't have the technical ability to write any software. But my co-founder graduated industrial engineering. He's a self-taught um, software developer, and he did. He knows everything he needs to know to help create an MVP, to help get it off the ground, to hire engineers to help us build everything else that we need to, to build and scale the product. And if you're missing that technical component, it's likely that you're gonna lose or you're gonna have to find it in some capacity. Before starting this company, I was naive in this process. I was naive thinking that, why do we need a technical founder? Can I just hire a consulting group? Can I just hire a group, somehow get the money and hire a group to, to build a MVP product and go try to sell it and get feedback and all this stuff? And the answer is you can, but this becomes extremely expensive, extremely complicated. It's, it's a, a severe risk for your business and, and it just, 
creates problems, to be honest. So if you're an engineering student and say you do have the technical ability, then that's great. Then you can start working down that path and all, you don't need to be an, an amazing amazing at this. You just need to be a, enough to get started. And if you are an engineer and you don't have the technical ability, say you're not a software developer, but you want to start a software company, you still have a, a great repertoire and understand, technical understanding of how to solve problems, how these systems work. And best of all, you're in a community of people who you can go to, to to get help for this. So for example, if you're an engineer at whatever whatever university, the idea is you can go and meet these people. There's tons of people on that campus who I'm sure have the technical ability, who share a similar passion, who wanna solve the same problems you do. You can easily partner with them or go talk with people and figure out how, how to make this, this matching work. The main point I wanna drive home here is go meet the people who are as passionate about these problems as you are. Go meet them. The world is yours for the taking. This is what I've realized over the past year and a half to two years. I thought this stuff is, was so complicated stuff that you know maybe we couldn't figure out and that's just not true it's just step by step you just got to get head in the right direction and what I made on the point that I was making in the first point of going through competitions and then grants these are like stepping stairs incubators that help you get help get you pointed in the right direction early on so to close this out if this is of interest to you the best thing that you can do is to get in the pool actually get started thinking and pondering does nothing find friends who are as passionate as you are about solving these problems build an MVP, talk to users, get started in these competitions. You just have to get after it. My next video will be about how we raised about $200,000 in non-dilutive funding before graduation. If you're interested in watching this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I will see you guys next time. Thank you.